four, three, we have ignition. And liftoff of the first United Launch Alliance Vulcan rocket. This accomplishment marks a significant success for ULA, Blue Origin, and NASA. After nearly a decade of planning, designing, assembly, and testing, United Launch Alliance's efforts have reached fruition with the maiden launch of its Vulcan rocket. The inaugural flight of this launch vehicle took place this morning at 2.18 a.m. Eastern from Space Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. As the countdown approached L-6 hours, marking 8 p.m. on Sunday, the launch complex received the green light for clearance. Within an hour, the preparations surged ahead, entering a heightened state of readiness as they initiated the chilling process for the feed lines, gearing up for the imminent tanking procedure. Following the completion of all polls, the entire launch team, including engineering specialists and leadership, unanimously agreed to proceed to the final phase of the countdown. Without any interruptions, the countdown progressed smoothly, and moments before liftoff, the rocket's engines ignited, propelling the vehicle into the dark morning skies of Florida. Within less than two minutes of the flight's commencement, the rocket's two smaller side boosters detached, and the liquid methane and liquid oxygen-fueled rocket emitted a haunting blue glow as it ascended into space. Now, here's an impressive detail. Vulcan is loaded with a whopping 454,000 kilograms of propellant, a blend of methane, liquid oxygen, and liquid hydrogen. Once fully fueled, this rocket weighs an impressive 663,367 kilograms. On board the Vulcan rocket lies the primary payload, Astrobotics Peregrine Lunar Lander, eagerly awaiting its voyage to the moon. This vital cargo was carefully secured atop the rocket within the 15 and a half meter long payload fairing. Crafted by Beyond Gravity back on December 20th, Peregrine is all set to embark on its journey to the moon through a translunar injection orbit, while the Centaur 5 upper stage will proceed with Celestis Memorial Space Flight's Enterprise flight to orbit around the sun. If everything unfolds as planned, Peregrine is slated for a landing on February 23rd in a mid-latitude region of the moon known as Sinus Viscositatis, more famously recognized as the Bay of Stickiness. Don't ask me why that is. Leading America back to the surface of the moon for the first First time since Apollo is a momentous honor, expressed Astrobotics CEO John Thornton ahead of the launch. Until now, achieving a soft landing on Earth's closest celestial body has been a feat accomplished by only a few national space agencies. The Soviet Union claimed the honor of being the first in 1966, followed by the United States, which remains the sole country to have sent humans to the lunar surface. Over the past decade, China has achieved successful landing three times, while India accomplished the feat on its second attempt just last year. Presently, the United States is shifting its focus to the commercial sector, aiming to stimulate a more expansive lunar economy and transport its own hardware at a significantly reduced cost through the Commercial Lunar Payload Services Program, or CLPS. Mark Peller, ULA's Vice President of Vulcan Development, characterized the launch as a pivotal moment for many within in the ULA company. It's terribly exciting. It's one of these once-in-your-career opportunities for most people, and many people go through their whole career without ever getting this opportunity, Peller said. It's been a lot of hard work, but it's tremendously gratifying, and it's really helped us at ULA obviously develop our capabilities internally to bring new products to market. ULA President and CEO Tori Bruno formally announced Vulcan to the world on April 13th of 2015, about seven months after its announced partnership with Blue Origin to acquire BE-4 engines to power the booster stage of this new rocket. The transition away from the Russian RD-180 engines, which were utilized in the Atlas V rocket, stemmed from the U.S. Congress's pressure following Russia's 2014 invasion of Crimea. Originally slated for its inaugural flight in 2019, the rocket faced numerous developmental delays, coupled with setbacks in the delivery of the 
the BE4 engines. Astrobotic CEO John Thornton highlighted ULA's impressive legacy, boasting a perfect mission success rate since its establishment in 2006 as a significant factor in their selection of Vulcan as their spacecraft. Vulcan may have a new name, but it essentially embodies an upgraded version of Atlas V, which gives us considerable assurance, Thornton mentioned. They've been an exceptional partner throughout the years, aiding in the development of this capability concurrently with their rocket. In addition, Thornton highlighted their financial constraints, noting that they needed innovative solutions to fund their lunar flight. Being part of Vulcan's debut flight was deemed a significant risk, but it greatly facilitated their financial arrangements. We chose United Launch Alliance's first flight of Vulcan because we believe so much in the company and we're very, very confident that this mission will be successful, Thornton affirmed. And of course, that came with some relief on the price, and that makes this mission possible. While Thornton didn't specify Astrobotics payment for the ULA flight, NASA is investing $108 million for Astrobotics transportation of its five payloads to the lunar surface under the Commercial Lunar Payload Services program. This sum marks an increase from the original $79.5 million intended for 14 NASA payloads. The augmented cost was influenced by COVID-19 related supply chain disruptions and a shift in the landing location in 2022, according to NASA's Joel Kearns. Consequently, the offloaded payloads are set to fly on other CLIPS missions. Wentz highlighted that Vulcan primarily consists of legacy hardware with a range of enhancements or modified versions, which ULA believes contributes to bolstering confidence. With the exception of the BE4 engine, all other hardware or their derivatives have been part of previous Atlas or Delta flights, catering to various customers' missions, Wentz explained. This track record has provided us with the confidence to extend our support to NASA and Astrobotics missions. Furthermore, Northrop Grumman is supplying an enhanced version of its solid rocket boosters for this mission. The pair of GEM 63XL engines, in combination with the BE-4, will yield just over 2 million pounds of thrust during liftoff. In future Vulcan flights, the potential utilization of up to 6 engines could yield a maximum thrust of 3.3 million. Comparatively, the thrust varies across different rockets. A Falcon 9 generates about 1.7 million pounds, while a Falcon Heavy boasts 5.1 million pounds. Atlas V achieves 2.3 million pounds in its most robust configuration, and the Delta IV Heavy hits 2.1 million. NASA's SLS impresses with 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust, whereas SpaceX's new Starship and Super Heavy collectively produce an estimated 17 million pounds of thrust. Vulcan does provide extremely good value and is very competitive in the marketplace, Peller said. What's unique about Vulcan and what we originally set out to do was to provide a rocket that had all the capabilities of Atlas and Delta in one single system, and we achieved that. Actually, a vehicle that has performance that's even greater than the three-body Delta IV Heavy. Peller emphasized that the system meets the diverse needs of its commercial, civil, and national security space customers, catering to various destinations like low Earth orbit, geostationary orbit, and even interplanetary missions, such as the CERT-1 flight. We've been able to achieve a vehicle that goes from medium to heavy lift in a single core configuration, he said. We do that by the flexibility to add solid rocket boosters so that it provides heavy lift capability with the single core rocket and providing extreme value for our customers. So, a very flexible rocket that is very competitive in the marketplace. This initial launch for ULA's Vulcan rocket serves as a pivotal milestone for the company, particularly as it progresses toward the crucial missions within the U.S. Space Force's National Security Space Launch Program. Vulcan is mandated to complete two certification flights before undertaking its inaugural NSSL mission. Following the Peregrine flight, which fulfills the requirement for CERT-1, ULA aims to conduct the CERT-2 mission by launching Sierra Space's Dream Chaser space plane to the International Space Station. Peller mentioned a 60-day period set aside for comprehensive data review post-CERT-1 launch, ensuring preparedness for subsequent stages. They anticipate scheduling the CERT-2 mission for around April, coinciding with another ULA mission to the ISS, the launch of Boeing's Starliner spacecraft for the crew flight test. Whether both missions will occur within the same month remains uncertain. As ULA sets its ambitious schedule for the coming years, the promise of increased launch rates and evolving capabilities stands at the forefront of their plans. With multiple missions lined up and the prospect of heightened productivity, what pivotal milestones and advancements do you anticipate for ULA's future 
endeavors. How might this surge in launch rates influence the landscape of commercial space missions in the near future? Next year, the rate increases to a total of 28 launches for the year, Wentz said. We're also putting in place a secondary capability where we can do vertical integration of a second vehicle in parallel, and once that capability is brought on board, our flight rate will increase. As we conclude our glimpse into ULA's ambitious plans for the upcoming year and beyond the trajectory of their launch schedule invites contemplation. What implications might ULA's planned surge in launch rates hold for the broader space industry? How do you envision the future of space exploration amid these evolving capabilities? Join the dialogue and share your thoughts on the potential impacts and advancements sparked by ULA's expansive launch schedule in the comments section down below. Otherwise, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.